Hey Andre, do you know what the uh, most popular Mazda is right now? The Miata. No. <laughs> it must be a crossover. It is a crossover. Yes. It's the CX-5, by far the most popular Mazda. And guess what? We've got some, I think these are the very first buy shots uh, out there, or at least one of the first ones, of the new CX-5 uh, sent to us by Adrian. So thank you, Adrian, for sending us those pictures. And in this video, we're going to delve into this uh, Video archaeology, is that what we're doing? What do you call that when you like take apart a prototype picture? We are studying it and we're dissecting it. <laughs> we are scientists. <laughs> anyway, he, uh, Adrian grabbed this uh, prototype uh, in the wild in the streets of LA. Uh, and to us, it looks like the new generation of the CX-5 crossover. Um, and that's a huge deal because CX-5 is, of course, the car that keeps Mazda in business. Nearly fix, nearly 56,000 of them have been sold this year, Andre. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and it's basically a mid-size to compact crossover, right? Yes. It's two row, and I'm really pleased to see this. And it actually doesn't have a lot of cladding, this prototype. It has those stickers, you know, the black and white and gray stickers, I guess. Yeah, so this is really our first look at Mazda's next crossover. Um, after the electric MX-30, uh, things have been a little bit quiet for Mazda. So now we're seeing finally some movement. Uh, and uh, let's go uh, through these images and let's see what we're looking at. So right now, I mean, to my eye, the changes look really subtle. Yeah, and also, by the way, um, we have a lot of speculation here because yes, we don't know is, what's... This is all speculation. <laughs> well, because we don't know what's on the inside. You know, we don't know what the and engine you, might be. Are you saying that it could be the next Lada, Neva? Uh, it could at? be. <laughs> It could be. But you know what we can tell? We yeah. can tell that it has really large wheels, maybe even 20-inch wheels. Uh, of course, low-profile tires. You know what else I can see here in the you know, profile view? Right. I can see that the rear axle is powered because the center cap is missing, and the front wheel looks to be powered, so it's all-wheel drive. Yeah. Um, according to Zach's notes here, Andre, the grill's a little bit thinner, the lower face is a bit different, and there are some new LED lights, uh, taillights, like you said, and more squared off taillights. Uh, not as many soft lines, according to Zach, as the current design. So, Robin, why do you think the styling is not, you know, a big departure? Why is it so tame? Well, uh, the CX-5 replacement could be riding on a new platform, Andre, and possibly have a new engine. Now, for years and years, we've had the Skyactiv G4 cylinder. Uh, Really just one engine option for the CX-5, uh, just a choice of a non-turbo or turbo. But could the new Mazda's larger architecture platform be hiding a new engine? Yeah, and also we think uh, this also may be a rear-wheel drive biased architecture, so they might be updating it. Obviously, we're speculating once again. Yeah, I mean, we're thinking there could be an inline six, right? Uh, we could be looking at the same story for the CX-5, um, the 2.5 liter Sky Active G may remain for lower models, and the top end version could be a straight six, Andre. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, and also it could be a hybridized system. It right? could be, yep. yep. Um, so it could be you know, partially electric. Um, you know, uh, also Toyota and Mazda are working on an electric platform together. So there may be, but I don't think this is it. I well, don't think we're looking at it. Well, it does look to be a little bit of a power bulge in the hood, so I don't know what that means, but, you know, we shall see. Um, and, uh, you know, according to Zach, and I think he's right, almost certainly we won't see the diesel return. I think diesel's dead. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree completely, yeah. After my, It's funny, Mazda finally brought the CX-5 diesel here and then quickly killed it after... Uh, you know, low sales, so I don't think they're going to be putting a diesel. Now, the current uh, CX-5 has a 250 horsepower, 320 pound-foot of torque power plant, uh, and, um, you know, if there's going to be a, a six straight six, and once again, all speculation, it would have to be more than that. And it's probably going to be bigger, too. Every generation is always bigger. Yeah, a little bit, and I think the current engine is really good. Yeah. You know, 250 horsepower on premium fuel, and we've tested several of these, right, in the, in the, in the past already. That's a really good power plant, so they might keep that, like you were saying, and also have another engine for the higher trim. Now, um, you know, Mazda has been kind of trying to move up market. Kind of, they've been in this kind of weird place, right, where they're not quite uh, non-premium, but they're not quite premium. You know, so they're not quite like a Lexus, but they're not quite a Toyota. Kind mm -hmm. of in that funky space that Volvo has been in a long time. Um, so I would expect that uh, the interior of this new CX-5 uh, is going to hopefully reflect that trend toward moving upscale. Um, you know, odds are uh, that the CX-5 replacement will step up to the next level. Having said that, it, it's a bad place to be, right? Because uh, you're basically selling premium at, you know, regular car prices. 
Yeah, but they've also had, you know, kind of nicer interiors recently, right? A wood trim, special metal trim, leather, uh, very comfortable. Yep, now there's a name. Uh, so we've had the CX-5 name for yeah. the past decade or so, but that may change as well. Uh, if you guys have any guesses. <laughs> well, our guess, you know, and Zach, our producer and um, editor of TFLcar.com, CX-50 could be one, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because they have this, you know, adding a, a digit to the end of their some of their car names. Um, also, that could mean that it could be like, you know, kind of like a coupe or a crossover coupe. A, ha but a hatchback or a fastback. Maybe, but this one looks pretty squared off. So this one looks a little bit more crossovery. Well, there was a rumor last summer uh, from a Japanese outlet that Mazda will rename uh, the CX-5, but we don't have, like I say, any official information on that. If you have a good name for it, let me know. I think CX-50, like the CX-30, is a good uh, guess, but I'd love to see it, you know, be something Japanese. Remember the uh, uh, Kazashi? Yeah, yeah. The Suzuki the Kazashi. Suzuki, yeah. yeah, it was like the Kazashi was like a holy wind or something. Yeah. yeah well, don't do that, Mazda. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> anyway, but at the same time, I kind of, you know, I don't like the alphanumerics usually, but we're used to CX-5, right? That's what we know. And if you're wondering what Mazda's saying about this, um, auto manufacturers never comment on future product, uh, so we're going to have to see and wait. Now, one more question, Andre. Yes. If Mazda's going upmarket and moving to a new platform engine, how much do you think this car may cost? Well, we don't know, but we do know what the current one costs. And which so, is? Uh, between about 26500 which is to start, which is the base model. Um, tops out close to forty grand, which is about thirty nine two seventy five, And, of course, you know, that's with the nicest interior, the most powerful engine, all that stuff. You know, with the current way that uh, things are heading, I wouldn't be surprised if this saw uh, a significant price jump, especially if they're heading, you know, with kind of the dual uh, factors or the perfect storm of a chip shortage, uh, new car sales being red hot, and, of course, a more premium vehicle. This could be a much more expensive vehicle. And in this premium, it has two tailpipes, dude. So it's dual exhaust. And yeah, so, um, but I think Mazda also needs to think about fuel efficiency, right? So I think hybridization is going to be really important. Electrification. How about, how about off-road worthiness? You said there were, you see uh, recovery hooks on that? I, I do see that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, front and back, huh? Yeah, well, maybe that's just because it's a prototype. Yeah, you I know? would say, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah. <laughs> In case that's new straight six <laughs> grabs out. <laughs> or maybe it's one that it wants to tow somebody else. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an off-road worthy, or at least, you know, like like a, a Subaru Rise, right? Where it's an like adventure an out, model. Exactly, outback, yes. like uh, adventure model. It's so red hot, everybody's doing it, and I, I, I can't see Mazda staying out of the party and not jumping in the pool. Uh, so that would be really cool. I would love to see that, you know. Uh, so far, Mazda has been one of the two Japanese companies, including Honda, that have really kind of stayed out of the off-road market. Of course, Honda does have some, you know, the new... Uh, Passport is yeah. sort of kind of off-roady, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they also jumped in. Yeah, and also I just want to say again, Adrian, thank you for sending us these yep. images. Yep, um, you nailed it. You know, you caught it right there from a lot of different angles. So thank you. Yeah, and uh, guys, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, is this the new Nivalada <laughs> or is this the CF5? <laughs> Twenty. Wonder what year? 2022, 2023. Hard to say. Probably in there, but probably not this year. Probably not uh, this year. Not, not, not coming this year. No, but maybe we can catch up in the mountains. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. As always, check out uh, TFL Car and TFL Now for the latest in news, views, and of course, should be hitting the mic, new Mazda prototype reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. Thank you.